First up is going to be thermal regulation. So I've said a hundred times, hypothermia can be deadly. If you don't remember anything else, <laughs> remember that. So remember, below 94 degrees, they have trouble suckling, their intestines aren't moving correctly, and they, they end up being tachycardic. Um, and that's just in response to the rest of their body, you know, not not doing what it needs to do. Um, if you get colder than that, um, where they're 85 degrees or below, their guts stop moving entirely. Bacteria translocate from the gut into the uh, bloodstream and they get septic. Their heart rate will decrease and they get hypoglycemic if they weren't already. Um, and then below 70, these guys are motionless. Their hearts aren't beating at all or very, very slowly. There's no pulse and they look like they're dead. They may not be dead yet and that's why we always say warming up is so important. And they're, one of my teachers in vet school used to say you can't say something is dead unless it's warm and dead because potentially if you warm up one of these really, really cold kittens, there is a chance they can make it. I mean, obviously they've got some things stacked against them, but warming is so important because you can't say that they've totally gone, they're totally gone until you warm them up. So um, it's worth a try, but remember that, you know, it gets, you know, they have more chance of sepsis and more chance of other side effects the colder that they've gotten. So don't let them get that cold to start with. <laughs> so, okay. So thermoregulation, we want to rewarm them slowly. So if they do come in cold, you take your time and you warm them up slowly over several hours. We don't want them to go from 80 degrees up to 99 degrees in half an hour. Um, we need to give their, their body time to kind of slowly acclimate to the warmer temperatures. And we only shoot to get them to 98 or 99 degrees, and then we stop from there. If they're a young enough kitten, that is normal for them. But if they're a little bit older kittens where they expect to be, you know, low 100s, we'll let them warm themselves up to the last, you know, up to the 100, 100 degree level on their own. Um, as you increase the body temperature, we want to do it just very passively. So we want to have heating blankets, hot water bottles, and we want to always make sure that as the kitten kind of comes back to life and starts to warm up, if they feel like they need to move away from the heat source, they can. Um, if they're not moving, you know, they're that, they're that cold, they're just not moving, we need to go there and rotate them every 10 to 20 minutes because we don't want, you know, their abdomen to be warm and their back to be cold. Um, we don't want their, you know, their tail to be really warm and their head to be cold. You know, we want to just keep them moving um, and kind of simulate, you know, the scenario where when they are more modal, they're going to move on their own. Um, another great thing to do is make sure you turn the heat up in the room that you're in and take away any drafts because, again, if we can get them back to the point where they're, you know, they're a more functional kitten, they're going to be able to keep themselves about 10 degrees warmer than the room. So if we can get the room up into the high 70s at least, we can get, you know, they can hopefully hold themselves in the 90-degree range. Um, and then warmed fluids do a lot, and you can do you can warm your fluids up as warm as 95 or 98 degrees, so kind of almost a hot temperature, and give it very very slowly, either intravenously or intraosseously. Um, I've never warmed fluids personally that warm, but I've had them pretty pretty darn warm, like in the 80 degree temperature range. But you can go up into the 90s if necessary. But just be careful again, because you don't want to warm them up too quickly. So take your time when you're doing it, um, and slowly get them up to the 98 degree temperature range. Um, the reason we don't want to warm them up too quickly is as you warm up the tissues, the tissues will start to metabolize and have a greater oxygen demand. And the problem is when you're doing that, number one, we're not sure that they can keep up with that oxygen demand if their heart rate is still slow and they haven't gotten their heart rate back up. Um, also, also, warming too quickly means that they're going to have excessive water loss, both from the me metabolism and then also from the body itself, just through the skin. Um, and both those things put together where they're asking for oxygen in their tissues and they're losing water and becoming hypovolemic potentially, that can lead them to, to go into like a shock situation. So warm them very, very slowly so that, that you have less of a chance of something like that occurring.